Welcome to this edition of Trends Talk. I'm Brian Bolio, CEO and Chief Economist of ITR Economics. Today, we're going to spend a few minutes talking about U.S. total manufacturing. It's a series compiled by the Federal Reserve Board, and we finished up the year in good shape. Uh, manufacturing stayed strong as we thought it would through 2022, but there's been a, a recent development in that of late, the 112 rate of change, which compares the latest monthly data to one year ago, it slipped into negative territory, which means latest month came in slightly below one year ago. And normally we would chalk that up to uh, noise, but given everything going on in the leading indicators, the fact that they are still declining and the very high interest rate environment that we had to contend with, we thought we'd take a look at that a little bit more closely. And it looks like from our perspective that the first quarter of 2023 will come in 0.7% below the first quarter of 2022. So a very mild decline year over year, um, but it's coming a little bit sooner than we thought it would. So therefore we want to let you know about it. The second quarter is expected to come in again, essentially even with the second quarter of last year down 0.6%. That's not really something anybody would notice. Uh, so for most businesses, if they run with U.S. total manufacturing, as published by the Fed, then what they're going to feel is the business is flat year over year. But we get a little bit more pronounced weakness in the second half of the year, with the year as a whole, 2023, coming in at minus 1.1% relative to 2022. Again, a very, very mild decline, but if you're budgeting for ongoing expansion, uh, it could put a hole in some of your plans, certainly could ruin your budget in terms of profitability. It gets a little bit tighter in 2024, uh, particularly in the first half of the year. We think that uh, higher interest rates, slowing consumerism um, begin to bite in, the, in 2024. It's probably over with by the end of the third quarter of 2024, and the year as a whole isn't gonna be that much different than 2023 at a minus 1.7% decline. And from peak to trough, we have the data trend, that 12-month moving average declining 2.3%, which is milder than normal. Um, oh, it's a little bit more severe than what we experienced in 15, 16, that particular recession. But again, that was one that was, was not bad to uh, contend with. The point of the, uh, this is when it's that mild, there are things you can do about it. You know, you have your backlog. What we're seeing is um, backlogs are being eroded. Uh, they're being normalized, really, is where we're going to. As supply chains improve, demand slackens a little bit. We're going through our backlog. And without those leading indicators having turned around, what we're, we don't really have a solid reason for thinking it's going to turn up in uh, the first half of 2024, particularly with interest rates continuing to be a problem. Uh, we're coming up with a new... Um, release called FedWatch, and um, keep an eye on that on our website also. It's where we're going to be taking a more in-depth view, um, episodically looking at what's going on with the interest rates, with the inflation rate. But for now, it's clearly impacting our ability to manufacture, um, not our desire, but our ability. There's some good news in that, and that the labor pressure should be abating somewhat. You won't be giving out the same magnitude raises in 2023 or 24 that you did in 2022. Uh, just watch the inventories, watch the throughput, and uh, continue to make uh, money and look for some new opportunities if you can at all find them. If you're in the in the position where you can go to markets where you haven't been before, this is a great time to figure out how to do that for 2024. This is Brian Bolio for this edition of Trends Talk. Thanks for listening.